Hey guys and welcome to the Study 2 project. My name's Tolu and I'm a first year medic, so I thought it would only be right to teach you a little bit about the human body. The focus of this video is going to be about a very, very important organ, the heart. The heart is basically a pump. It works to send blood around the body. The blood contains some pretty important stuff like oxygen and nutrients that our tissues need. And it also works to help get rid of some waste that we don't need, like carbon dioxide and urea. And yes, I know what you're thinking. Urea sounds like urine, and that's because it basically is urine, just without the water and without a few other little compounds, I guess. Our hearts are about the size of our fists. So if you clench your fists like so, you can like imagine what it would look like inside of your chest. The heart itself sits in the middle of our chest, but slightly to the left. So on me, it'll be around here. Cool, right? Now, inside the heart, there are four chambers. Two chambers on the left and two chambers on the right. So when we refer to these chambers, we usually specify what side of the heart we're talking about. So the right and left atrium and the right and left ventricles. The atria of the heart are the upper chambers of the heart. And don't be worried, atria is literally just the plural word for atrium. So the right atrium and the left atrium. The ventricles are the lower chambers of the heart. So the right ventricles and the left ventricles. When blood passes around the body, it goes into the atria first and then into the ventricles before being sent off to different parts of the body. When blood enters the right atria, it comes from the rest of the body. It then passes into the right ventricles and then into what is called the pulmonary artery, which is just a large vessel that sends blood to the lungs. When blood comes into the left atria, it's just come from the lungs, so it's got a very rich supply in oxygen. It then passes into the right ventricles and then into what is called the aorta, which is again another large vessel, but this time it sends blood to the rest of the body so it can get the oxygen it needs. Here's a diagram to help you visualise the movement of blood around the body. Look at how there are two loops. This is called double circulation, with the first loop sending blood between the lungs and the heart, and the second loop sending blood between the heart and the rest of the body. The names of these circulations are the pulmonary circulation and the systemic circulation, where pulmonary refers to your lungs and systemic refers to the rest of your body. All the tissue in our body needs blood and a constant supply of it at that. The heart itself gets its own blood supply from what are called coronary arteries. They lie on the outside of the heart. If something goes wrong in the heart, blood supply to organs like the brain and even the heart itself can be blocked. And this is not good. It could lead to conditions like stroke and heart attacks, which need immediate clinical intervention. There are a couple of lifestyle habits and factors that we can try and avoid to prevent these conditions from happening, such as high cholesterol, which is associated with our diet, smoking and excess alcohol. Now, continuing on, let's talk a little bit more about the insides of the heart. Alongside the chambers of the heart, there are a couple more features that help with its function of pumping blood. This includes the valves. The valves of the heart work like any other valve, where they open and close to help control the flow of fluid. In this case, blood. There are two valves on each side of the heart, a set of valves between the atria and the ventricles and a set of valves between the ventricles and their outflow tracts. So like I said previously, the pulmonary artery and the aorta. On the left side of the heart, between the left atrium and the left ventricle, we have the mitral valve. The mitral valve has two flaps or cusps, and it's called the mitral valve because it apparently looks like a bishop's hat, which is called a mitre. So mitre, mitral valve. The aortic valve controls the flow of blood between the left ventricle and the aorta, which is a large vessel that sends blood to the rest of the body. On the right-hand side, on the other hand, there are two valves called the tricuspid valve and the pulmonary valve. The tricuspid valve prevents the flow of blood between the right atrium and the right ventricle. It's called the tricuspid valve because it has three flaps. Tricuspid, three. The pulmonary valve is a valve that lies between the right ventricle and the pulmonary artery. The pulmonary artery sends blood to the lungs so that they can continue to be oxygenated again. The valves of the heart are supported by tough fibrous strings called, wait for it, 
cordae tendinii or cordae tendini. And yes, it looks as weird as it sounds, but I'll help you say it again so you can kind of remember how it's pronounced. So cordae tendinii or cordae tendini. And I'll say that one more time because I know it's a very weird pronunciation. Cordae tendinii or cordae tendini. Whatever you choose, try and have a go at it yourself. However, the cordae tendinii are not working alone when it comes to making the valves more stable. There are also structures called papillary muscles that help support the valves of the heart. Each of the chambers of the heart are separated by what is called a septum. The septum is made of dense connective tissue that arises when we develop in the womb. However, sometimes the septum doesn't form properly during development, and this leads to what is called a septal defect. Septal defects are named according to which part of the heart they affect. So you can have an atrioventricular septal defect, which is where the septum between the atria and the ventricles isn't formed properly. Now, when these defects arise, they can cause the heart to not work as efficiently as it normally would, because it could potentially lead to the mixing of blood that's oxygenated and deoxygenated, which isn't really helpful and can lead to fatal um, consequences if not treated quickly. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is what actually gets the heart to work. There's a little region near the right atrium that excites the cells of the heart. It's called the sinoatrial node. When these cells get excited, they contract because the cells of the heart are muscle cells. This is what gets the heart to start pumping. However, the sinoatrial node cannot excite all of the cells of the heart because there are a couple of regions of the heart that just stop this excitation. This is where another node comes into play to help continue to excite the cells of the heart and it's called the atrioventricular node. The atrioventricular node excites the other cells of the heart after a short delay. The sinoatrial node and the atrioventricular node work together to help set our heart rate. But as we all know, the heart rate can change. And this is because it is influenced by signals sent by the vagus nerve and nerves of the sympathetic trunk. They work to either increase or decrease the heart rate depending on external conditions. So for example, exercise or the concentration of carbon dioxide in your blood. The combination of these nerves form a network called the cardiac plexus. And yeah, there it is, a short introduction to the heart. And yes, I could go on for a lot longer, but I don't really want to give you guys a lecture on the heart. But if you want to know a little bit more about this amazing organ, feel free to do some research yourself. I'll leave a couple of links below to help you get started. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Keep watching more of the Study 2 Project videos and check out my own channel as well and see some of my own videos. And I'll leave all of that in the description box below. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.